It's good, good, gug time, and boy, howdy, are we needy in this legendary arc, legend arc, uh, as we catch back up with the last episode as he's putting the final finishing touches to the dude using the Dark Kiva powers. Um, it's just a fun little end of the fight, beam struggle, all that kind of stuff. And Legends immediately like, hey, what's up, Hotoro? And Hotoro's like, what? Who the fuck are you? The evil dude gets away, and his giant polygonal bosses go like, yo, bitch, you fucked up. You got one more chance, don't fuck it up, too. And it's just like, ah, oh, okay, so he's gonna, he's gonna be back, he's gonna do some fuck, he's gonna do some fucking shit, right? Uh, and we have, uh, a legend dude, I can't remember his name, what is his name? Kaguya. Kaguya is his name, I wrote it down. Kaguya is just hanging out with the alchemy crew and just exchanging information of just like, hey, Hotoro and I, he, Hotoro helped me out in my dimension, but... I guess getting back to his world kind of messed with his memory, so they're re-downloading all of it, that kind of stuff. They <laughs> dress up the rest of the, the, the teenage crew, so Sabimaro, Rine, Ringe, uh, in very fancy dresses and uh, a very fancy rhinestone suit, and they're just kind of exchanging information, what is 100, what's all the deal, hey, we get, let's coordinate our plans, and everyone's like, alright, cool, we got a lot of things to, we gotta do. But we also have other things we need to do. Uh, uh, Minato uh, goes to uh, Kayaka, Kaya, Kayaka to help with lots, just do more of that treatment. Hotoro has to go take uh, another exam. Uh, so everybody has to go do certain things until it's eventually just um, Kaguya Legend, Spanner, and Sabimaru. And it's a brilliant, just fun little gag of Sabimaru just going like, this is this is awkward. <laughs> the new guy, the one who doesn't talk, and then Spanner Edgelord. It's it's this very funny awkward moment. Um, but we see Hotro and uh, Kajuki uh, just retaking the test, and Kajuki's kind of poking and prodding of like, hey, so Common Rider, and Hotro's like, yeah, like. Does Kajuki know that Hotoro is still Common Rider? Did his brain get whammied? Don't know. He might have. There's no definitive saying yes or no. We'll have to see. But maybe Kajuki's kind of going like the, hey, uh, I think Common Rider's cool. Maybe if he had a secret identity, he could tell his best friend and he wouldn't have to worry about it because his best friend would totally be cool with it. And Hotoro is just like, dude, I just need to finish my test. And that's when Kaguya shows up and just starts being like a little bugger. It's just like, hey, pay attention to me. Uh, we'll get into that because it's very much a, hey, it's very much a, hey, pay attention to me. But Kaguya also just goes like, hey, Butler, what the fuck are you doing here? Because Kajuki and Butler are played by the same actor and it's a fun little haha -ha gimmick. Uh, Hotro just pull, pulls him up uh, and Rene, uh, not Rene, uh, Tabimaru and Hotro are just trying to go like, Yo, dude, you can't, you can't just be doing this kind of shit. And Spanner just runs in and goes like, "There's where the fuck you are." And it's like, "What's going on?" And Kaguya's has been causing trouble. He got on TV and, and did all this kind of stuff. He now has a fan club, and it's just like, Jesus, dude, you you have stepped in it this entire time. Hotoro and Kaguya are taking a walk, and and it's just like, "Hey, buddy, you can't, you can't be doing that," you know. When the hundreds show up, and we have a big fun fight. A lot of cool stuff. We get to see uh, Build's final form. Um, I have not watched Build. I've heard a lot of good things about it, but uh, yeah, in the Build's final form, we get to see another legend got charred form, but this time with fire. Uh, the fire edition makes it look really cool. Um, but there is a moment where Kaguya. Uh, uses Hopper 1 to do a finisher. And what that causes is uh, Hopper 1 gets onto the front of his gun and he's screaming like, ah, shit! And he fires Hopper and he's like, well, we beat them, Hotoro. And Hotoro's just like, my dude, what the fuck? Don't treat my friends like tools. And Kaguya's just immediate like, oh, okay. All right, bye. And Hotoro's like, what the? F Why are you mad? I'm the one who should be mad here. And it's just like, 
it's interesting. It, 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 it's just really kind of just showing who the character is. And Butler comes in and goes like, hey, my dude, you, you're not wrong, but like, in his world, he's the only common writer. He's lonely, and he kind of puts on a big show, but it is, that's what it is. It's a show. He's shy and lonely and an awkward guy, and he, he just knows that you're a friend that you helped him out and he cares and he's like coming here and he was like oh sh he was like oh a chance to actually be with a friend and this whole time you've just been shitting on him and Elter was like yeah okay you know what maybe I've been a little hard on him but it's not letting Kage it's so far it doesn't feel like it's Kage just being let off the hook it feels very much of like, hey, we need to come to an understanding. Uh, and that's when the evil man from the beginning of the episode shows back up with a driver from Zero One, which I also didn't watch. Whoa, look at that. I haven't watched a lot of things. He transforms, I think it's Ark? I think that's the form it is. And he fights Kaguya. Kaguya transforms into Decade, uh, the final form Decade. And it's just a, a, a really cool fight. Hotaro and Kaguya come to an understanding and agreement of like, Hey, you're my friend too. And like, yeah, you Hopper kind of forgives you. So like, maybe let's not do that again. But also like, I understand where you're coming from and I'm here for you. It's like, again, Hotaro is very much about uh, emotional maturity, all this kind of stuff. Kaguya. Uh, then again transforms into uh uh zero two uh and they have a really cool big fight scene with uh that against arc he goes back uh the bad guy goes back to his polygonal bosses and they go like nope bitch get dusty uh and the belt melts and turns into a 24 hour clock kaguya goes like oh shit a clock he can't see it it's in a different dimension i think and then Kaguya goes like, sorry, Hotaro, I, I gotta I gotta fucking fight you. And that's where the episode ends. But like I like I said at the beginning of this little arc, I knew this would link directly to the theme of empathy because the show directly says Legend is an awkward braggart. He is putting on a facade and Hotaro has to dig down, break it through the facade, break into who this man is, and try to understand and empathize and connect to this guy. They Like, yeah, he likes, but it's also like, hey, a lot of the things that you're finding very abrasive are an act that he's putting on. And, like, there's layers to, like, is he truly being an asshole? How, like breaking through to your understanding of him and all these different kind of little layers to that. And ultimately no no one really sees the real Kaguya except Butler. Because all the villains are seeing him as like this showboating asshole who just dunks on them all the time. Spanner just sees him as a pain in the ass. And just everyone else doesn't know how to interact with him, right? Like, there's that scene, Sabi Maro just going like, this is fucking awkward. But Butler's there, Butler cares about Kaguya, and they have this connection similar to Hotro and Kajiki. Um, but it's kind of inverse. Hotro is very much kind of the empathetic person to make you understand Kajiki as a human being, right? Because he's he's an awkward guy, Kajiki. He's an otaku, he... he, he I wouldn't say he's Chunibio, but he has Chunibio tendencies. Uh, he's just kind of an awkward guy, but Hotaro helps him break through that and helps him become a bigger person. In a similar way, Kaguya is an awkward dude. Uh, puts on this big persona, and Butler's there to go like, Yo, my guys, Kaguya, cool dude. Don't let, don't let him lie to you. You know, don't let him do this to you. And, and Hotaro, with that, can, uh, with like talking to Butler, tr like empathizes with Kaguya, and like hopefully will help him bridge and connect to others. This was a pretty dang good episode, uh, and my money 
is on the Abyssal Sister Group uh, taking some of Legend's powers as, like, the final weapon. Because, hey, alchemy's all about gold, and what is Legend but a gold dude? Um, and I just love how all the crew interacts now. It's like, Spanner is just the cranky older brother of just, like, I don't want to... Mom says I have to fucking drive you to Pizza Hut. Fuck you, Hotaro. What the fuck did I do? You're forcing me to drive you to Pizza Hut. And? Pizza Hut's delicious! I don't want to be driving you to Pizza Hut. Do you hate me? No, I don't hate you. I just don't want to drive you to fucking Pizza Hut. You know? Uh, Sabi Maru also is just being great you know uh, like like i like i said in a much earlier episode of just like so much of this cast is very neurodivergent coded from at least my perspective um and no one gives anybody shit about it everyone's just like yo no you're cool you're just doing things the way you need to do them that's fine uh and i like that um but just with the way everybody interacts it it just makes me feel like there has to be a bunch of fun slice of life stuff in between the episodes, and that'd be really fun to see. Maybe, uh, uh, hey, Toei, maybe a, a four coma spinoff. Maybe, who knows? Uh, love the action. The action's solid, top notch. Um, and I also like that they're continuously using older suits and not just defaulting to the most current toy and power up. I really appreciate that. It's really cool. Uh, but. No, it's also cool. The fact that I make videos like this over on Patreon every week, I have been going over a different series. Uh, currently, right now, it is Agito. So, if you like these gut charred videos and you want to see more, as little as one dollar a month, you can get an extra video a week. But you know what else? We get the comments at the end of these videos. First up, from just some random guy. Yeah, I can understand wanting Legend to show up earlier and be less of just like a an immediate and now for something completely different. Um, but hey, I'm I'm enjoying him showing up just for the action because sometimes you just need over the top dumb action and yelling at the top of your lungs about saving others while the Ichigo chime goes, Ching! you know, it's fun, it's great. Uh, next up from Fish Pop. Yeah, Lotch just got, was able to transform in the the, the classic Valverad, the 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 ratty post-apocalyptic version, and and she only has a couple of stripes on her, her her version, but like, you know, yeah, I I don't mind it. They could like, it's a few stripes of color to differentiate it, but she's just re using regular Valverad, kind of like she's being accepted as part of the crew. And yeah, that final fight would have looked great without credits, but don't they usually do those in the, the Blu-ray releases? So, just gotta wait a couple months, and uh, final bad guy being called Gorgos. Well, you know what we need? We need someone gorgeous to fight them back. That was very bad pun. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, thought, idea. What if Gorgos was the previous user user of the legend power and that's what made him do that and that's what uh kaguya is trying to prevent in his world becoming another ouroboros world maybe that's a connection you know gorgas gorgeous it could be some foreshadowing no idea this is just some spaghetti at the wall uh but finally from esconde yeah all the all the stuff the sisters have been doing, uh, um, like Clotho, Lachis joining the crew, Clotho getting the new uh, evil suit, it it just makes me really thankful and gr glad that the sisters aren't being left behind by the story. That it's just not like, oh, we have new things to play with, but we'll just ignore them, right? But the the whole show is going whole hog uh, to make sure that they stay relevant and grow as characters. Like, Lachis is getting uh, the Valverad suit, and that just makes a lot of sense. She's becoming part of the crew, and, and to an extent, the Valverad suit looks beaten down and broken, and that's kind of where she is mentally. Clotho is full of rage, and that rage is growing, and 
it's kind of taking hold of her, and that's her character arc right now. And then you have Atropos, who's just continuing to be a little creeper, but you see that her heartbreak is affecting her. Like, it's not just the same character, and I really appreciate that, you know? I really appreciate that they are going out of their way uh, to keep them in the loop, story-wise. Yeah, the, and, and that last episode just has a bunch of continuity moments that uh, I just think are fun, you know? Like, you brought up um, how uh, Glare's power works on other writers, but here's the thing. Uh, she was, uh, Rene was able to dehension and break the, the mind control. We never got to see that with the DGP, and I'm thinking DGP writers may not be able to do that. So it, it's fun and interesting to see how power systems work around each other, and, and also just able to show all the power at Kitchard's disposal, right? And honestly, that, that that moment with Hotaro just going like, I'll fight for the people and I'll fight to protect their smiles is, is great. And I genuinely think, this is just me being like a legacy continuity nerd, but every writer should have at least like one moment in their story where they get to like, where you should be able to just place that Ichigo shine and it feel right. You know what I mean? Like that, I, I believe in the truth and power and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, no, definitely. In, and Ultra is having to deal with a lot of things because so shy folk, edgelord, self doubt, and all that kind of stuff. And and now he's having to deal with a braggadocious guy putting on that facade with Kaguya. It's really good. And you know what? This episode of Kachard was really good. And I hope. You stick around till next time where we'll talk about the next episode of Kamen Rider Kit Chard, episode 35. Ooh, it looks like it's gonna be a spicy one. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Esconde and Scott Firestein.